The Zebra is one of three bikes Hemiway just added to their lineup. This thick-framed, fat tire bike is another strong competitor in the $1 to $2,000 price range. The Zebra is on the high end of that at $1,899, but don't let that discourage you as it's got an updated frame for a higher weight capacity, a better motor that lasts longer, and a higher quality battery that has an 80% capacity after a thousand charge cycles. So let's dive in and see what the Zebra can do starting off with the speed test. The Zebra has a 750 watt brushless gear hub motor in the rear wheel and Hemiway has updated that motor. They say this one is more resistant to higher temperatures and has better heat dissipation. Now that's powered with a 48 volt 20 amp hour Samsung battery, which is fully integrated into the frame into the down section of the bike and takes seven hours to recharge. And it's pretty easy to remove. There's a dial uh, that you just turn once you insert the key and it falls right out. And then once out, it does have a battery readout, and of course you can charge it. There is a charging port on the battery itself. Now they did update their battery. They say that it has a capacity up to 80% after a thousand charge cycles. Now I did a little math with that, and I just assumed that the battery is going to last about 50 miles. It has a rating of 60 to 70, so I'm a little bit lenient with that. I will test the range out later. But with a 50 mile average time a thousand charge cycles, that's 50,000 miles. Or another way to look at it is you can actually go across the entire United States from the north northwest to the south southeast 17 times. <laughs> which is pretty crazy. <laughs> That's a long distance. The Zebra has up to nine pedal assist levels. In the uh, menu, you can actually change that from zero to three, zero to five, one to five, or one to nine. And you can also set how much power you want per pedal assist level. I do have a set from zero to five. That's just my favorite setup. They say it's rated up to 25 miles per hour on the highest pedal assist level. And in the settings, you can also change that. You can lower that down to, I wanna say around 12 miles per hour. I do have it set to the highest power output. And I wanna show you how fast it can go on each of the five pedal assist levels, starting off with level one. I've got a full battery and a flat stretch of trail here. So let's see how fast I can go. For pedal assist one, I got 12 miles per hour. Pedal assist two, 16. Pedal assist three, 19. Pedal assist four, 22. And pedal assist five, 27 miles per hour which is two over the rating of 25. 27 miles per hour places the Zebra as the second fastest bike in this price range. Another thing Hemiway has upgraded is the frame. It's made from a higher quality 6061 aluminum, but that does come at a cost. It's the second heaviest bike in this class at 79 pounds. So it is a beast of a bike, but it does have the highest weight limit of 400 pounds. That outdoes any other brand by at least 50 pounds. Now I looked back through the other bikes I reviewed in this price range, and most of them can hit 25 miles per hour within 15 to 17 seconds. I'm gonna do an acceleration test on both pedal assist level five and straight throttle and show you the differences and see which one can actually reach that speed the quickest and where it falls in line with the other brands. As you could have guessed with the weight of the bike, that does affect acceleration. It takes a few seconds to get going with both pedal assist and throttle. Now they pretty much have the same power and don't really start to take off till around 20 to 30 feet. There's no delay in power, it's just slow at first. Now pedal assist is a little faster, topping out at just under 23 and a half seconds, making the Zebra one of the slowest bikes in this class. This is the range test. The bike has a rating of 60 to 80 miles, which is the longest rating I've seen in this price range. So I'm hoping it can hold up to what it's rated for. Here's everything I liked and didn't like about the Zebra. This has gotta be the biggest frame bike I've ever reviewed. That down section is just insanely thick. I put both my hands together and can barely connect my fingers. So if you like a big frame bike, you know, something that looks like a tank coming down the trail, this is the bike for you. And they have painted it nice. They do call this the Zebra. And on this top bar, they have put some Zebra stripes. So they got a little creative with their uh, paint job, which I think looks pretty cool. Now, as far as balance, I always like to do a no hand test. It's not the easiest to ride without any hands. There's some bikes I can hop on and within five minutes, take my hands off and be just fine. This one I feel takes a little bit more effort. I've kind of played around with it a little bit and can only go a few feet before it starts to wobble a little bit. Now the handlebars are 27.6 inches wide. So you've got just great handling and control. There is a short section of trail I just went on that had a bunch of sharp turns and kind of hills in that and it handled it very well. 
Uh, those big fat tires make the bike stay upright. And that's why a lot of people, you know, older people are actually getting these types of bikes because they're just super easy to ride and very stable. Now I've gone about 20 miles and haven't had any rattling or vibrations or clicking. Everything is very quiet and solid feeling. Now that being said, the motor is one of the louder motors in this price range, especially when you're climbing. It does tend to make a little bit more noise when it's going up a hill. Now as far as the geometry of the bike, the only thing I don't like is how far the seat is from the handlebars. As I'm riding, I kind of slide towards the very tip of the saddle, and I tried to even angle that up, but it, there isn't that option. It lets you move it front and back about an inch, and I did move it as far front as it would go. I just prefer bikes that have the saddle a little bit closer to the handlebars. I'm 5'11", and feel like it's a good size for my frame, and it's designed to fit a rider 5'3", up to 6'4". I always like to find a hill to see how the bike handles when it approaches 30 miles per hour. Uh, I did get this up to 30 miles per hour just briefly. The hill had a sharp turn at the very bottom of it, so I had to slow down, but it handled that speed very well. And that seems to be the case with a lot of these fat tire bikes. I mean, you can hit 30, 40 miles an hour sometimes. I haven't got 40 yet. I haven't found a steep enough hill for that, but I've got close, and they can really deal with that higher speed. I mentioned in past videos that it's the little things that make a bike stand apart. So I want to give you guys an idea of how everything feels on the handlebars, since that's the stuff that you're touching and feeling. I've seen these exact same grips on like, you know, seven, eight other brands in the same price range, and they're pretty comfortable. The half twist throttle feels very nice. Actually has a little bit of padding to it too. An area where a lot of companies like don't pay attention to is the brake levers. Uh, usually those don't feel very nice. You can kind of tell they're cheap. Uh, not the case here. They are aluminum alloy and they feel very nice and spendy. And those brake levers do cut the motor as soon as they're pressed. Nice safety feature there. And then there's a seven speed Shimano shifter and that shifts nice and quick. There's no skipping and everything locks in nice and fast. The pedal assist isn't the most sensitive I've seen for a bike in this price range. I always do that test when I'm, you know, maxing the bike out. And uh, when I'm doing that and stop pedaling, it's actually a pretty long delay from when I stop pedaling to when the power cuts off. And then when I begin to pedal, it takes about two to three revolutions before the power kicks back on. There's so many things I like about this bike. I wish they would have designed the pedal assist to be a little bit more sensitive. It would have made me just like the bike a little bit more. The throttle doesn't depend on the pedal assist level. It gives you access to full power whenever you need it, which is nice. Uh, as most of you guys know, that is my favorite design. Now this is the type of bike that pretty much does 100% of the work for you. So once I hit about 12, 13 miles per hour, even on the highest gear, I really can't pedal fast enough to feel any type of resistance. And that is on the highest pedal assist level. Obviously, if you turn that to a lower pedal assist level, that wouldn't be the case, but on pedal assist five, it basically does all the work for you. On my way back to my car with one battery bar left, I was averaging 25 miles per hour on the flats. The bike didn't seem to lose any power from a full battery to almost an empty battery, which is pretty impressive. Most bikes when the last bar hits, drop some power and speed by about five to seven miles per hour. Now a couple minutes later, I reached my car and had most of the battery bar left, so I'm thinking I could have gotten another three to four miles. I never like to run the battery all the way out. My app showed 26.41 miles with a good elevation gain of 1,255 feet. That's four to 500 feet above what I usually get. Now 26 and a half miles is quite a bit less than the rating of 60, which I was expecting. I usually get about half of what they say the bike is rated for, but that range is really good for how much elevation I had. One of the top in this price range. It's hard to get over 25 miles with over a thousand feet in elevation gain. I came out here to test out the alloy spring front fork suspension with lockout and adjustment. I've got a pretty cool bike trail behind me. It's mostly a smooth trail with not a lot of rocks, which I think is what this bike is going to be designed to handle. Now it also has 26 by 4 inch Kenda fat tires. They're some of the more beefier tires I've seen in this price range, so it should be able to grip and handle this trail pretty good. Well, you do have a hard tail on the Zebra, so you're going to want to stay away from super rocky and bumpy trails. <laughs> you can hear my voice kind of vibrating a little bit as I hit some of these rougher sections. But that front fork, even though it's spring suspension, does a pretty good job taking care of some of these bigger bumps and potholes. As far as taking this off-road, doing some exploring, 
it kind of falls in line with other bikes in this price range. The smoother the trail, the better. It's just such a heavy bike, and so when you do hit one of these bigger bumps, it does rattle you pretty good. So you want to stick to a green rated trail or a nice gravel road if you are going to do some off-roading. Okay, well the Zebra produces 86 newton meters of torque and that is the highest in this price range by about 5%. I didn't see hill rating on the website. I reached out to Hemiway and they said that they're getting to that. Uh, this is just recently launched, so they haven't tested it out, but uh, I've got a good sized hill here, 12%, uh, and it's a half a mile long hill, so it's one of the biggest ones in the area. Twelve miles an hour, and it pretty much gets steep right off the bat. Holding at twelve, I'm gonna lower my gears down a little bit. Down to nine, down to eight. Steepest part here, and I got zero resistance on the pedals. The bike's doing hundred percent. Down to ten, down to nine, down to eight and pretty much over the top. Now usually on a hill that steep with a bike as heavy as this is, even on the easiest gear, I'm still feeling some type of resistance, but I felt nothing with this bike. So I'm even thinking uh, it could go up to about a 15 to maybe even 20% hill. It has got some serious climbing power. It's time for a brake test. The Zebra does come with 180 millimeter disc hydraulic brakes. I'm at the top of the hill I just came up for the hill test. I'm gonna head down and hit the brakes when I reach about 25 miles per hour and see how well they do. No noise, no squeaking, no pulsating, very nice brakes. Next, I wanted to see how easy it would be to pedal without any power, so I set the assist to level zero. I'm just hitting these small little hills on this trail and man, I can feel some resistance pretty quick when I start to climb those. Yeah, that is tough. Holy crap. That's a short hill, maybe 30 feet long, but whoo, my legs are burning. I think it's safe to say that you're definitely not gonna wanna ride this without any power. Here's an overview of the screen and control pad. Well, on the left side of the handlebars is the control pad. Hit the power button for about three seconds, screen turns on. And that displays battery life, pedal assist mode, speed, and odometer. A lot of bikes have similar pads, just a plus and minus to change the pedal assist. There's a button for the headlights. Once you hit that, the icon will light up. It actually has a pretty nice looking uh, headlight, and it's uh, 48 volts. The I button switches through different readouts. So you got total odometer, max speed, average speed, trip odometer, and ride time. Overall, if you're around my weight of 185 pounds, here's what you can expect. A top speed of 27 miles per hour with both pedal assist and throttle. A slow acceleration reaching that speed in almost 24 seconds. Good hill climbing ability taking on a 12% grade at 8 miles per hour. Range is one of the best in class, especially for the elevation gain. And the hydraulic brakes are smooth and very powerful. Anytime you can create a big and beefy bike that can hit over 25 miles with over 1,000 feet of elevation gain, you've accomplished something. And that's why I've got no problem recommending this bike. I've got the link in the description if you want to check it out. Also, check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com, for all my reviews. I've got everything sorted by price and capability to help you find the right bike. Before you go, hit that like button, and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching, and take care.